877-817-9829 or visit thepowermall.com. And remember, beware of knockoffs. Get the original. Get Strauss Heart Drops. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Power Hour. Thank you for joining us today. I mean that. You are an exceptional group of people. It's hard to stay in front of you. Well, I really don't, but I like to think, though. You know that saying, there goes my group. I must follow after them, for I am their leader. <laughs> it's so true with this group of people. I got a lot of positive comments about your questions yesterday on the CAFR report with Walter Burian. A lot of you had concerns about the interview, um, quality of the interview. I'll put it that way. <clears throat> Monsanto wants to replace the bees that are killing with genetically engineered flying ants. Oh, that's great. Just, you know, we do away with one group of insects and we'll just, you know... Play like that didn't even happen and get some more. Unbelievable. The EPA gave Monsanto, a Fortune 500 company, as we all know, a $3 million grant. Now, they're a Fortune 500 company. They got all the money in the world, and the EPA gives them a $3 million grant of taxpayer money to develop a solution for colony collapse disorder that they created in the first place. Now, what a deal! Think about this. They created it with a Roundup, glyphosate. They created the problem. Now they get to create the solution and get paid to do it. I mean, how much more corrupt and in our face can this be? A top scientist at Monsanto, John Lear, let the cat out of the bag when he admitted that GE farming and bees cannot coexist. So guess which one is expendable? The following quotes from the World News Daily report sort of tells you what's going on. Latest studies have found a link between um, pesticides that are vastly used in geo GE corn crops as GE farming has become an essential part of agriculture in today's modern world. We had to develop ways to promote both the continuity of GE farming and the survival of the honeybees, a fascinating challenge. Since GE farming and these pesticides are here to stay, really? Says who? Says Monsanto. They first tried to modify the bees as to increase their immune system to these insecticides with no success. In other words, they killed the bees. Yet we did not despair and eventually started testing on winged virgin queens and males of the ant species. It's disgusting, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely what they are doing to the infrastructure of this country. But who is there to challenge Monsanto? No one except the people. And yet, we're left with this world that is self-destructing before our very eyes 
because of people making a whole lot of money. Eight secret essentials to long-term food storage. Off the Grid News says the greatest priority in preparedness should be long-term food storage, simply because any catastrophic event will affect the supply chain of food. Now, the eight main essentials of storable food are temperature, humidity, oxygen, light, food type, packaging integrity, keeping away the rodents and insects, and rotation. Now, this is all in the email blast and all at the Power Hour News section, all those things and how to avoid those with your food storage. We'll be back after this one-minute, 10-second break. Stay tuned to the Power Hour. Joyce Riley. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay. Every Thursday night at 7 on KCAA. NBC News Radio, AM 1050. This is Dick from Carpet Masters. Carpet Masters has been serving the Inland Empire for over 55 years. Carpet Masters uses extraction cleaning for your carpet because there's no better cleaning to remove the soil from your carpet. All of our furniture cleaning is done by hand in your home or in our plant. Carpet Masters also offers dry cleaning for fine furniture. Call Carpet Masters at 793 721 This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. CNBC News is next, a courtesy of Buy Sell Now Off of That Show, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. Good morning. I'm Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. Here we go again. Stocks are set to fall heavily this morning. The Dow could drop 300 points. The Nasdaq, maybe 100 or more. Wall Street continues to worry about China, where manufacturing fell again last month. Dollar Tree lost money last quarter because it bought family dollar stores, but Dollar Tree also sold more discount goods to more customers who came in and bought more items on each trip they went to the store. Samsung smartwatch, not a big seller yet anywhere. This week, Samsung's out with its newest model, the Gear S2, which will have a round face and a battery that it says lasts longer than the one in the Apple Watch. Walmart telling some stores to cut the hours of some workers. Walmart says the stores are overscheduled. Not that the workers are overpaid. And Fiat Chrysler just reporting that sales rose more than expected in August. Sales came in hot because of strong demand for its Jeeps and its Ram 1500 pickup trucks. Once again, stocks could drop today. Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. Hey, Bob, how's business? Is the new website helping? Not good. I I can't figure out how to get the website finished. How did you do it? Easy. I called web.com. They built my website for free. Then they promoted it on all the search engines. Like Google, Yahoo, and Bing? Exactly. And Web.com has helped grow my business so much, I had to bring on new staff. Hey, if Web.com did it for you, they're perfect for me. Call now, 1-800-535-8815. That's 1-800-535-8815. Again, 1-800-535-8815. Have you had trouble with online dating? This is eHarmony founder, Dr. Neil Clark Warren. We've created a new solution, EH+. EH+, combines the personal attention of a matchmaker with eHarmony's extensive pool of great singles. EH+, gives you hand-selected matches and freedom from being online. Get started today. Call 855-930-LOVE. That's 855-930-LOVE. The most diversified radio station on the dial, AM 1050 KCAA. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now. 
free for the next 60 days. And once you see how easy it is, you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees. That's right. Take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free. You might even win a Samsung tablet, Amazon gift cards, and other cool prizes. Buy, sell, make offer.com is the future of online selling. You can use Skype to talk to your buyer or seller. Plus, you can use video to showcase your items. Buy, sell, make offer.com. With your Tuesday news, I'm Jim Miller, KCAA, 1050 AM, CNBC News, the station that leaves no listener behind. All across Fairplex, preparations underway for the start of the L.A. County Fair Friday. The giant Ferris wheel is close to being fully built, and workers are removing protective paper from plants. That'll make up the Mardi Gras-themed show at the Flower and Garden Pavilion. In another part of Fairplex, workers are busy turning an exhibit and hauling to the all-ages Grinding Gears nightclub. About half the rides have arrived, and the other half arrived this week, early part of the week, from the Antelope Valley Fair in Lancaster. Animals for exhibits also arriving on scene. UCLA defensive back Ishmael Adams arrested early Sunday on suspicion of robbery after allegedly trying to steal a cell phone from a Uber driver. Richard Jr. taken into custody early in the morning. According to police, the crime occurred outside of UCLA police headquarters in the south end of campus. Adams arrested a block away shortly after the driver, who suffered minor injuries, reported the robbery. A 5'8", 180-pound defensive back has started 26 consecutive games at UCLA. Federal immigration agents in the Southland arrested 244 foreign nationals who are in the country illegally and have prior criminal records. number of arrests set a record for a four-day sting. The operation, which ended Thursday, included 99 arrests in Los Angeles County, 55 in Orange, and 24 in Riverside. That, according to ICE officials, there was also 43 arrests in San Bernardino County, 20 in Santa Barbara County, and 3 in San Luis Obispo County. That's what's happening. Have a great Tuesday. I'm Jim Miller, KCAA, 1050 AM. CNBC News, the station that leaves no listener behind. Here's your Money Minute with Market Wrap host Mo Ansari. If you follow the markets, you've probably been getting seasick lately. But what if I told you that market volatility can be a good thing? If you're a bargain hunter, this is your coupon. So keep your shopping list handy. If you're a long-term investor with plenty of time before retirement, the money going into your 401k each month will buy more shares when the markets are down. And if you have a good financial plan, you can relax while others worry because that plan will carry you beyond today's headlines. Of course, you should should always consider professional guidance before making any financial decisions. That's your Money Minute. I'm Mo Ansari. For more tips on investing during market volatility and other investment topics, listen to Market Wrap weekdays at 5 p.m. on this station. For a free consultation with Mo Ansari, call 800-388-9700. That's 800-388-9700. Compact Asset Management is a registered investment advisor. Funds custodian, Fidelity Institutional Wealth Services, member FINRA SIPC. I want to keep my lawn. 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 We We want want to keep keep our lawn. lawn. This is Rob from the Water Zone Show. Tune us in every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. and we'll tell you how to keep your lawn while reducing your landscape water usage. The Water Zone on KCAA 1050 AM. Thank you, Inland Empire, for listening to KCAA Radio. Good morning, good morning. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. Time to get serious. We got something running else here, Brandon. How you doing over there? Todd, I think there's something on your computer that's running. Um, this is your show, America. If I knew at 22, what I know now, our life would be better off. Okay, well, so we're running something here. That's better. It's to- on Todd's end. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, good morning. This is a Tuesday morning here on KCAA AM 1050. So excited. Got a great show planned for you today. We're going to be uh, talking in the second half of the show with uh, Danny and Jonathan Blair. Together, they have created, uh, as a father and son, they've created a movie called Found on South Street. They're from Riverside, or they live in Riverside, affiliated with uh, California Baptist University. This is a phenomenal movie. We're going to be talking to them about that. They've got some screenings coming up. Uh, lots of n- news stories of the day. Uh, but first of all, I want to uh, tell you about all the ways you can listen to KCAA AM 1050. Of course, you can find us at 1050 on the AM dial. You can also find us at KCAA 
radio.com, where you'll find links to all of our social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You'll find our embedded Ustream feed, where actually there's a camera here in the in the studio, or you can click a button and just click to listen. Um, if you uh, want, if you have none of the, if you don't have, a, you don't have an internet connection and you don't uh, have a radio handy, you can call to listen at 832-999-1050, 832-999-1050. If you have an Android device and you want to listen on your phone, you can go to kcaaexpress.com. If you have an Apple device and you want to listen on your phone, you can go, you can use the TuneIn app. Um, so lots of ways to, to engage and listen to uh, KCAA, the morning show and all the shows on the station. Um, I want to uh, talk about, uh, there's a something, I don't know if any of you all, when, when Ontario still had JetBlue, whether you all used JetBlue or not, but it was great. Direct flights to New York City, they were inexpensive, but then JetBlue went away. When the economy crashed, there was not enough traffic, apparently, or it was too expensive, and, and they left Ontario, which was a real bummer. It meant you had to go to, uh, go to LAX. Well, JetBlue is coming back to the inland region in Palm Springs, and they're going to have $99 flights to New York City. So JetBlue will resume service to the inland region in January after an absence of several years. It will offer nonstop red-eye service from Palm Springs International Airport to New York City. Seats go on sale August 31st, and the flights will run Thursdays through Mondays between January 14th and May 1st. And this is according to a news release from the low-cost airline. Introductory fares begin at $99. Pending government approval, outbound flights will be at 11.49 p.m. Pacific time, arriving at JFK at 7.43 Eastern time. So you sleep on the plane, wake up refreshed, and ready to to start your day uh, in New York City. Ontario was JetBlue's first West Coast city when the airline was new. Officials at that airport did not return calls asking whether it would add JetBlue flights as well. Of course, Ontario Airport is going through a lot of changes right now because, uh, you know, their law is finally let it go. And so Ontario is going to take possession um, of uh, of the Ontario airport, the city of Ontario, and a, probably a consortium of local uh, leaders and local governors, governments um, to be able to, to control that airport, which is really good. Um, they, it's, they suspended service to Ontario on September 3rd, 2008, citing fuel costs. And uh, that was right around, everything was crashing. It was just a bad time at that time. Um, and so let me see, are we, Brandon, are we able to get Todd back on? Okay, we're having issues this morning, not able to get Todd back on. Um, so there's a, a other things going on that are really important, that are really good to talk about. Um, uh, Obama has gone, he's in Alaska right now. President Obama is in Alaska right now. And um, he is ringing, you know, tr- trying to ring the bell and trying to get people to understand that climate change um is a big issue at the moment. So he's saying, act now or condemn the world to a nightmare. Now, while he was there, he changed the name. And he, uh, his Department of the Interior changed the name of, of uh, Mount McKinley, which was named after um, uh, President McKinley, who's from the state of Ohio, changed the name of Mount McKinley to Denali, which is what the local native Alaskans have called it forever. So uh, Mount McKinley is now Denali. And I guess that was his olive branch to, to Alaska. And it looks like he's, he's going to be putting in some new policies Um, about climate change. Uh, President Obama challenged fellow world leaders in an unusually blunt language on Monday to act boldly on climate change or condemn our children to a world they will no longer have the capacity to repair. In a forceful address, Obama opened the Glacier conference in Anchorage, Alaska, by declaring, we are not moving fast enough. None of the nations represented here are moving fast enough. That includes the U.S., which the Obama said recognizes our role in creating this problem and embracing our role in resolving it. Obama, in using the three-day Glacier Conference, it stands for Global, Global Leadership in the Arctic Cooperation innovation, engagement, and resilience as a way to both highlight the perils of global warming and to cement his environmental legacy. He directed, he directly attacked politicians who argue that climate change isn't real, saying they are on their own shrinking island. The time to heed the critics and cynics and deniers is past. Unless the world acts more aggressively, according to the president, uh, and more quickly, nations will find themselves under severe, severe problems, more drought, more floods, rising sea levels, greater migration, more refugees, more scarcity, more conflict. So that's pretty significant, pretty severe um, uh, uh, language. Um, So um, 
yeah, it's uh, it, something that we have to keep an eye on. So why don't we go to an early break? We'll get get uh, uh, Todd back on. Um, it is 612. I'm Aaron Brinker, and we are. Uh, this is On the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. We'll be right back. I need somebody Help Not just anybody Help You know I need someone Help When, when I was younger when So I much was younger, younger than today I, I never needed anybody's help in any way now, But now these days are gone days I'm gone. not so self-assured Now I find, now I find a gentle mind An open History, as the old adage goes, is written by the winners, even though many winners are losers as human beings. For a clear example of this irony, check out the new national monument to corporate greed created by our Park Service in Chicago. It's on the site of what had been Pullman, a company town created by the feudalistic 19th century profiteer George Pullman. He amassed a fortune as a rail car manufacturer, infamously suppressing the wages of his 5,000 factory workers. Yet, he considered himself a beneficent employer, having built a 600-acre town for the workforce and vaingloriously naming the new home place for himself. It included houses he rented to them, churches, schools, a bank, library, and parks, all owned by his company. Indeed, when officials announced this year that Pullman's town was becoming an honored part of America's park system, Officials attested to his generosity by hailing it as a place he created, quote, to provide his employees a good life. Pullman Town's workers, however, were less charmed, for he ruled the burg as autocratically as he did his factories. No saloons or agitators allowed, nor did he allow any public speeches, town meetings, independent newspapers, or even open discussions. Resentful residents created a little ditty that summed up the surreal feel of the place. We are born in a Pullman house, fed from the Pullman shops, taught in the Pullman schools, catechized in the Pullman church, and when we die, we shall go to Pullman hell. In 1894, the workers got Pullman's hell on earth when he drastically cut their wages but refused to lower their rent. He had guaranteed a 6% return to the wealthy investors who financed the town, he explained, and their needs came first. This is Jim Hightower saying, now, 120 years later, we taxpayers are financing a monument to this loser's greed? Hi, this is Steve Allenart from Rancho Financial with the Mortgage Minute. With property values increasing, this might be the perfect time to do a loan checkup to see if it makes sense to refinance. Do you have an equity line? If your equity line is getting close to 10 years old, your payment is about to fully amortize. Coupled with the certainty that the feds will soon increase short-term rates, there might be a substantial jump in payment on your line of credit. If we combine your current loan, equity line, and possibly even some of your credit debt, there could be a substantial reduction in what you have to pay each month. Do you have VA eligibility? VA will allow 100% cash out financing. This may be a perfect time to use your eligibility. We can go 85% cash out with FHA or 80% with a standard conventional loan. There are many possible options that could make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's why you need a loan financial planner to provide you with all of your possible options. Give me a call, Steve Allidort, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070, or go to loanfinancialplanner.com. Freeway Auto Center is your road to home. Now open and ready to send you home in a much better car than you're driving now. Freeway Auto Center has a special phone number for KCAA listeners. Get ready, get a pen. Here's the number you need. Right now, in the 909 area code, call 269-8731. Got it? 269-8731. That's the number you need for Freeway Auto Center. Just call 909-269-8731 and ask for the road to home. You may need to unload a car that costs more to fix than you paid for it. Maybe you need a dependable car for your kids to go to college. Maybe it's just time. Freeway Auto Center on Waterman, north of the 10, has the selection you're looking for. Freeway Auto Center will get you there. Call 909-269-8731. That's 269-8731. That's your number for Freeway Auto Center. It's time for the KCAA Community Calendar, brought to you exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools. 
The clear mission of Learn for Life is to motivate and mentor students who have dropped out of school and provide them with the personalized education and technical training necessary to advance their lives. KCAA Radio wants you to take extra precautions if you work in the sun or in any hot environment this summer, especially if you're a senior citizen and if you take certain medications. Be aware that antidepressants and antihistamines act on an area of the brain that controls the skin's ability to produce sweat. Sweating is the body's natural cooling system, so if you can't sweat, you risk getting overheated. Also, beta blockers reduce the ability of the heart and lungs to adapt to stress including the stress associated with working in a hot environment. Therefore, beta blockers can, under certain conditions, contribute to the likelihood of a heat stroke and other heat-related illnesses. Did you know that amphetamines can raise body temperature? Did you know that diuretics encourage fluid loss, which can quickly lead to dehydration in hot weather? Did you know that sedatives can reduce a person's awareness of physical discomfort, which means symptoms of heat stress could be ignored? Did you know that decongestants can decrease blood flow to the skin, which impacts the blood's ability to cool down? Well, if you didn't know it before this announcement, you certainly know it now. So take this message seriously. Take care of yourself when you're working in the heat. Stay hydrated, work slower, and take breaks to cool down. This message is from KCAA. The KCAA Community Calendar is presented exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools where students can complete their education on a part-time basis. To find a resource center nearest you, call 1-877-360-LEARN or visit Learn for Life online at learn4life.org. It's time for traffic on KCAA AM 1050. In Chino Hills, we have stop-and-go traffic on the 71 southbound between Pine Avenue and the 91. Also in Corona, there's an accident. Right lane is blocked on the 91 westbound at 6th Street slash Maple Street. 91 In Corona, the 91 west past Maple, a wreck is blocking the right lane. The drive is slow before La Sierra. The 15 south is jamming up from Hidden Valley. The 15 north is stacking up from Temescal Canyon Road. Also in Corona, accident shoulder blocked on the 91 westbound westbound approaching the 71. In Ontario, slow traffic on the 60 westbound between the 15 and 57. The 10 west is slow and go from Etiwanda to White. The 210 west is slow in patches between Millican and Foothill. Also in Ontario, the off-ramp has reopened the I-10 eastbound at the I-15. And finally, in Moreno Valley, there's slow traffic on the 215 northbound between Alessandro Boulevard and Blaine Street. The 60 west is busy between Heacock and the 215. This is KCAA AM 1050, and I'm Aaron Brinker. This is KCAA. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we got our technical difficulties worked out. Woo! Yay! Yay! And it sounds... It sounds like listening to the traffic that Southern California has a cost-cutting measure has replaced all of their freeways with parking lots. Yay, Yay, SoCal. Yay, SoCal. Well, you happen to live at ground zero for the Inland Empire traffic in Corona. Yeah, it's like the one and only way into South County uh, Orange, and it literally is a parking lot every single morning from pretty much 5 a.m. through till noon. Yeah, through till 10 um, o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've about the time it clears up. It's going. It's now parking lot the other way, exactly. and so you can't you can't get back home. You can't get that from here. You can't get back. It's terrible. It's terrible. So you know you are a tech head. You always have been, as long as I've known you, a tech head. Um, and you're lo- you love Apple products, and they're going through some changes right now. You want to talk about that? Well, I love my gadgets, but uh, Apple's just recently announced that they are um, partnering up with Cisco to help make their um, specifically iOS devices. And I think this is um, targeted largely towards their iPads, but um, uh, affects their iPhones as well. And for that matter, the uh, iPod Touch. Um, But what they've done is they've partnered up with Cisco Systems, and Cisco is working with uh, Apple engineers to create an optimized channel uh, on Cisco routers. And Cisco is one of the top router sellers uh, in the enterprise. So in businesses, 
uh, most places other than small mom and pop shops have Cisco routers that allow um, and they, they provide the, the Wi-Fi within the business um, and allow all of their devices to attach to the Internet. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask a stupid question because, uh -huh. you know, I'm not sure. When you say there's going to be a special partnership, that means that there'll be a, a division. I'm going to ask a really dumb question. Division on the broadband um, uh, for that's just for the iOS devices so that they get kind of like a super highway on a company's broadband? Yeah, and that's not a stupid question at all. It's a great question. In fact, it's a question that a lot of people have been asking since this announcement, and it's not really clear. Apple is typically very um, uh, opaque when it comes to talking about what their plans are. They'll announce something, but it's always in very general terms when they make these announcements. Um, so it's not real specific, other than it just says it's a specially optimized, whatever that is in air quotes, um, uh, access for iOS devices. It sounds like that's the case, that they will have like a chunk of broadband set aside that um, perhaps uses protocols that allow them to uh, more deeply integrate with iOS and the router in order to provide um, cleaner uh, attachments. So for like um, instance, when you're using something that's high bandwidth, like playing video or something like that. So if you were to do con use uh, uh, the, your iPad for a conference call, um, that they would then provide a, a cleaner pathway through the, to the Internet so that you could have um, uninterrupted video streaming amongst multiple people. Oh. And so um, they're trying to up the utility of their iPads specifically because those sales have not been spectacular, and Apple's just not used to not spectacular. <laughs> they have kind of high standards in that area. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and not too long ago, they made a deal with IBM, and IBM has been actually cranking out quite a few... Um, iOS apps specific to the enterprise that tie into the big IBM mainframe equipment on the back end so that people can pull information and data off of that in very specialized use cases. Um, and that agreement brought in like um, maybe 100 apps is what their goal was, I think, when they first announced it, uh, so that there would be a, a lot of integration there with, with high-end business equipment. And again, high-end meaning larger corporate type of places, not employees with 25 people. Um, but what's interesting about the Cisco one is, is there are a lot of places that have 25 people that use Cisco routers. And a few years back, Cisco actually bought out Linksys, which is one of the um, high-end sort of home routers and small business routers. And so it'll be interesting to see if this filters down to the Linksys equipment as well. Well, I and, and now I'm thinking people might want this in their home, right? I mean, because if you have kids who are watching videos on their iPads versus you're trying to get work done at home um, and you're on your laptop, you know, you might want them to have a segregated um, uh, amount of bandwidth. And if they if they overdo the bandwidth, like they overload it, they're doing too many things, that's on them. Well, absolutely, you know, and there's ways to do that now, but it's, it's you know, somebody, I mean, like, again, I, I'm, I'm a bit of, a, of a, a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff, and I could set it up and have it working in my house, but it's not something that the uh, general public is going to have running in their house. I mean, there's people yeah. out there who do it, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a chunk of them. In fact, that whole area has sort of been starting to be addressed. Google recently announced a brand new home router for $199, which you could buy inexpensive routers for $25 or $30, but a quality one's about $200. Um, with the idea that they would have a home router set up that is easy to use and optimized and allows you to do configurations um, that normally take somebody with some tech expertise and then you'll be able to do it in your home more easily. Um, and, you know, Apple has routers that they've been selling for quite a few years, so it'll be interesting to see how they respond to that or if they respond to that. So, you know, the uh, the high-end business market has really been the, the realm of, of the PC um, or, you know, running either Windows or Unix or Linux, rather. And so, you know, do you think Apple can make real headway in this market space? Well, you know, as a percentage of the overall market space, they're probably still quite small, but that's actually been the one area of growth for iPads is that they've been finding that a lot of people are using iPads. Um, uh, in fact, uh, IT departments have been issuing iPads for people um, because it allows them to be mobile within their business and move around and talk to people and yet still access the data. It's a great um, data grabbing device. Um, and they so they've been working in that direction. Um, a lot of... of um, uh, medical uses have come into it and warehousing uses because it's something you can carry around with you, check inventory while you're on the warehouse floor, that kind of thing. And so I think that that's, they see that as a toehold and something where they can expand their iPad sales because it's gone, they've gone a little bit flat to the public in terms of just their overall numbers. I think, though, that what they're finding is, is that even though iPad and iPhone are both running the same operating system, 
that the iPad is really treated more as a computer, and so people don't buy a new one every two years when their contract is up. And so the iPads, once they've sort of saturated, the sales have kind of leveled off. Um, because people just don't see uh, a reason or aren't compelled to go out and buy a new one until that one doesn't work anymore. And you know, as, lo as long as the battery's holding a charge, they're all still working. And so um, even first-generation iPads are still functional as Internet browsers and work just fine. So that's interesting. Did Apple really think that people would see them more as a phone? Because phones, we tend to turn over faster, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, if if you believe some of the things you've read, and again, Apple being a, a, a pretty tight-lipped company, it's hard to, to follow on some of that stuff. Um, but the uh, rumor has it they basically had the iPad ready to go first, and that Steve Jobs um, made a decision to say, no, let's go and push the phone out first, based on conversations with his top people. And I think part of that was they 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 saw the phone market as something that did turn over fairly quickly and would be more of a cash cow. So I think they had a hint, in a sense, that the iPad wouldn't turn over as much. But I think, you know, they figured that they were inventing a brand new um, market segment and really weren't sure how that was going to play out. And so um, it's taken a little bit of time for them to figure out that device. Some would say they haven't figured it out yet. Um, but it's, you know, where does it sit? It kind of sits somewhere between a full-blown, quote, computer and your iPhone. There are some people who, who are able to get through their day using nothing but the iPad. That's and, true. you know, I just, I don't think Apple knew what it was going to be, but I think they had an inkling. Well, and there had been tablets. They weren't the first one to come out with a tablet, but they're, they're the first ones to come out with a tablet that was not a dog. Right. Well, it was, you know, in fact, I think uh, if you can remember back, one of their pitches was you already know how to use it. It's it's the phone because it, it was the same thing. In fact, that was one of the criticisms that some of the pundits had when it first came out was that it was not sufficiently different. It was just a big iPad. And Apple's point was, yeah, it's just a big iPad. So there's things you can do in that real estate um, with a larger screen that you can't do easily on a phone. But excuse me, as the phones have gotten larger, that's becoming less and less of an issue. Yes. You know, I mean, if you carry a, a, a 6 Plus, then you're, you're carrying a small tablet, you know, a phablet. You are. Uh, in your pocket. And so there's a sense that that has uh, eaten into the need to sell or the, the need to buy from the consumer's perspective, um, the iPad. But the place that they've found some growth and some interest in it and some interesting use cases has been in businesses where people say, you know, it, we need to be able to see more information. We don't want it to be a phone, frankly. Um, we just want it to be able to, you know, do some um, database searches and research on our inventory or help us, um, you know, pull some analytics in for some decision making. And for that kind of thing, um, they've actually seen some growth. And, you know, people forget. I mean, yeah, there's lots of different Android tablets out there, but as a single entity, the iPad is still the top selling. Uh, tablet device as a single device, um, but it's been kind of slipping over the last um, two years as they, you know, find niches. I have to say, you know, I see them a lot. Um, there are a lot of small businesses in Redlands, uh, restaurants or, or you know, uh, pubs or whatever, coffee shops, who use the iPad as their cash register. And so, you know, they only accept cards. They don't accept cash. And um, uh, you just everything is swiped and you sign it with your finger and that's that's you know taking the place of buying a big cash register yeah I mean it's 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 frankly quite cheap and easy and it's you know Apple's got a secure back end so um, so transmitting the stuff back and forth has been um, fairly safe in a sense I mean frankly I'm a believer in anything that's on the internet has the opportunity to be stolen and so don't put anything on the internet ever that you don't <laughs> expect will be stolen at some point. Um, and oh, if that's it doesn't positive get stolen, <laughs> yeah. well, if it doesn't get stolen, then feel feel yourself blessed. But I mean, there's a certain amount of risk in everything. There's risk in crossing the street. Um, yeah, so I don't want to sound like I'm 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 a you know big negative there. I'm a big techie and a big tech user. And Apple's doing it the right way, and it's integrated with the hardware. So they've got you know the thumbprint um, identification. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, all the uh, iOS devices with the thumbprint and identification on them have a separate chip internally in order to encrypt that information so that it can't get stolen out of the phone. Oh, see, Recently, nice. there was some issues with some Android devices. Um, and don't don't take it the wrong way either. I think Android has some great uh, advantages as well. 
Um, but there were some some issues there where their fingerprint reader um, information was just stored as a file on the phone, which meant that anybody who hacked into the phone could take that information away from you. And, you know, it's not like a password. You can't change your fingerprint. So no. once it's out there, it's, it's out, out there. there. Well, listen, it's time for a break. It's 632. Uh, I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are. when we get back, we'll be talking to uh, Danny and Jonathan Blair about their, their movie found on South Street. Really excited about this interview. So this is KCAA AM 1050. We're on the brink, the morning show, and we'll be right back. KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. California Headline News, the first of what will be thousands of L.A. police officers begin wearing body cameras to promote transparency while on patrol. At any time they're involved in an investigative or an enforcement activity, uh, the camera will be activated. Captain Todd Chamberlain says his officers in the Mission District became the first to get the cameras Monday. 860 will get them by the end of the month. Immigration and Customs Enforcement announcing 244 arrests of immigrants across the region, all of them with previous criminal records and who allegedly pose a threat to public safety. Of the 244 that we arrested, about 60%, so about 150 of them were convicted of serious crimes such as uh, molestation, sexual abuse, and other violent crimes. They were in with ICE. Four of those detained had been previously removed from the states. The parents of Kate Steinley, the woman shot to death on Pier 14 in San Francisco, will file legal claims against the city and federal agencies today over the fact that the suspect had been deported five times but managed to return. Geico Weathers, Sunny and Dry, Jeff Scott, California News. Our vineyard started as a small farm, but with careful planning and hard work, we're now one of the largest grape producers in the region. And with so much to preserve, we need to be well protected. That's why we chose Travelers. They have the insurance we need to protect what we've built and to give us the confidence to keep growing. At Travelers, we're here to help keep vineyards growing today and into tomorrow. Contact your local Travelers agent or visit us at travelers.com slash agribusiness. GEICO presents 15 Things to See and Do in California. Located in Central California's Sierra Nevada mountain range, Yosemite National Park is made up of 1,170 square miles of breathtaking beauty. Few areas within the park are more majestic than Yosemite Falls, which is one of the tallest waterfalls in North America and fifth highest in the world. That's one of 15 Things to See and Do in California, brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call 1-800-947-AUTO or visit GEICO.com. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got patchy fog, mostly sunny skies and a high near 88. Tonight, patchy fog, mostly cloudy skies, a low near 58. Wednesday, patchy fog, mostly cloudy skies, becoming sunny with a high near 87. Wednesday night, patchy fog, partly cloudy skies, a low near 57. Thursday, patchy fog, mostly sunny skies, a high near 83. Thursday night, patchy fog, partly cloudy skies, a low near 56. Friday, patchy fog, mostly sunny with a high near 83. Friday night, mostly clear with a low near 56. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, KCAA. Like to spend a few days in another world? Then write this down. Golden Bear Cottages, Big Bear Lake. Now, listen, this is not some corporate-owned operation. It's family-owned and operated by some real nice people. Unique? Oh, you bet. Golden Bear Cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D., host of Healthline. Join me live to get your questions answered and hear the latest breakthrough information for you and your family. Our product line, Quantum Nutrition Labs, delivers what others only promise, nutrition that really works. This month, our pollen de fleur is on special. Natural support for the bladder, prostate, urinary, immune, and menopausal health. 
Pollen de Fleur is a non-solvent flower pollen extract from rye pollen with the mold and spore cleaned so there's little chance of an allergic reaction. Flower pollen extracts contain high levels of amino acids, antioxidants, and phytosterols. Pollen de Fleur also delivers bioflavonoids. Key help if you're waking up at night to urinate. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. Call 800-370-3447. That's 800-370-3447. Healthline at 2.30 p.m., Monday through Friday on KCAA 1050 a.m. San Bernardino, Loma Linda, Rialto listens to KCAA Radio. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker, who has a mic that was slightly muted. Sorry about that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I've never done that. (laughs) So excited to introduce our next guests, which are uh, Jonathan Blair and Dr. Danny Blair. Jonathan Blair is 20 years old today, so happy, happy birthday to Jonathan. Happy birthday. And he's an award-winning actor, both on stage and now in film. He's a sophomore studying film studies at California Baptist University, and he lives in Redlands. Um, And he has written, directed, and acted in a new feature film called uh, Found on South Street, um, drawing heavily from his personal experience, and he's growing up as a child of a deaf adult. Joining him is his father and and the producer of the movie, uh, Dr. Danny Blair. He's a professor of American Sign Language and a founding director of the Center for Deaf Studies at California Baptist University. He's an or ordained minister, holds a PhD in educational research from the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. Danny is an executive producer of Found on South Street and currently involved in the marketing and the promotion of the film. So welcome to both of you. Hi, thank you. Good morning, Aaron. <laughs> good morning, good morning. So so tell us about your, your film, Found on South Street. Well, uh, Found on South Street is a... Uh, feature-length independent film produced by California Baptist University and Hope for the Heart Ministries. Um, It's about uh, deaf identity um, and uh, what we attach our identities to. It follows uh, the story of a deaf man who is born hearing and at a very young age uh, becomes deaf uh, due to meningitis. And uh, for the rest of his life, um, he's grown up uh, with this sense of emptiness, that he attributes to that deafness. And so he thinks, oh, if I can cure this, if I can become hearing, uh, I'll be fulfilled. Um, and he's also a technological genius, so he uh, devotes all of his time and talent to creating a fictional cure to deafness called the Vox Box. And uh, he cures, he successfully cures deafness. So it becomes a question of if you could hear, would you? Uh, he cures deafness, uh, becomes very wealthy and prestigious. Uh, because of that, but at the cost of alienating uh, his deaf friends and family nearest to him who identify as culturally deaf, meaning they are deaf and they're proud of it. They see it as their language, their culture, their heritage, as opposed to his view of deafness, which is the uh, medical view of deafness. It's uh, just a disability. It's a problem to be fixed. Um, so uh, he changes his name to uh, from Arthur Hodges, Jr., to Dominic Bell after the Alexander Graham Bell, who many people don't know. Um, well, many people know he was the inventor of the modern telephone, but many people don't know that he was also a proponent of the eugenicist movement uh, at the turn of the century. Um, he was he had a deaf wife and a deaf mom. Um, and he loved deaf people, but uh, he wanted to uh, eradicate ASL, American Sign Language, their native language, in favor of teaching them to speak. Um, so he thought he was doing what he thought was right, much uh, like his namesake in the film Dominic Bell. He's doing what he thinks is right, uh, ultimately to the uh, chagrin of his uh, friends and family. So uh, after he becomes hearing, it becomes you know a story of, okay, well I'm hearing now. That didn't work. I still feel empty. Uh, what can I attach my identity to now? So he tries you know fame, wealth, marriage. Uh, drugs, after all that burns out, um, as it quickly will, if that's what we uh, attach our self-worth to. Um, So it becomes a very uh, downhill journey, you know, from drugs to depression to thoughts of suicide. Um, And without giving too much away, he hits rock bottom 
and it's at that point that he comes in contact with a mysterious traveler um, who kind of, through an awkward first meeting conversation, pulls his life story out of him. And this is where the film begins, at rock bottom. And so the film is told via flashback, and uh, we find out his life story. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the film in a nutshell without, without uh, giving too many details away, too many spoilers. <laughs> Wow, that sounds really interesting. This is Todd, guys. Um, so this is kind of an interesting area. I mean, it's not often that you see a lot of um, uh, deaf characters, much less having a storyline around that plot. You know, Marley Matlin was big, um, you know, a couple right. decades ago. Um, what kind of led you into this? I mean, I know it's your area of research, but uh, what was sort of the genesis of your idea? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, this is a uh, Jonathan, by the way, <laughs> just, to, uh, just to clarify. And happy um, birthday, Jonathan. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the, the genesis of it. Um, as you said, uh, I'm a CODA, so my mother is deaf, um, and my dad is hearing. So uh, I, I'm sorry, you're a what? Uh, I'm a CODA. That's a uh, child of a deaf adult, C-O-D-A, a CODA. Um, Interesting. I had not heard the term before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm actually kind of a half CODA because my mom is deaf and my dad is hearing. Um, but growing up, um, kind of with a foot in both worlds, that lent me um, the rare perspective of getting to see how both worlds, both cultures perceive each other. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's very few and far between that we see good death centered stories. So that was really the impetus uh, to create this um, was to tell a good death story about death characters, what they go through, their struggles, their triumphs, um, and to expose their world um, to hearing people, to the mainstream audience. And also just to tell a good story about identity, um, something that everyone goes through, not just deaf people. So. Well, it strikes me that it would be, you know, people hearing or not hearing, um, abled or differently abled, would be able to relate to this because, you know, we, we tie up our, our, our identity in lots of things. You know, it could be our job, it could be a status, it could be something. And if that is lost, then we kind of lose who we are. You know, it, you, they talk about in something that in my own life, this may sound silly, but empty nest syndrome my whole adult life I've had children and now they're adults and um, one is still at home but barely you know she's often doing things other ones moved away and uh -huh. my identity has always been mom okay what does that mean after that's finished and right. and and so I think that this is a universal theme absolutely absolutely that's kind of a recurring theme the the structure of the movie is kind of centered around four seasons of his life um, that kind of symbolize a season of life that just about anyone can relate to. There's um, what we kind of call the spring season, which was his, um, you know, his youthful, his college days, his, you know, the ambitious student who wants to make something of himself. Uh, the summer phase of his life where he does reach success or what he thinks, you know, what the world calls success, you know, money and affluence and power and prestige. Um, the autumn phase where that kind of burns out, you know, and he's kind of on his way down, he's disillusioned and the winter phase where he's left with nothing, basically. Um, and, yeah, it, just like you said, all of those temporary things uh, that he identified as are stripped away. And so what are you left with? And that's the crux of the film. So we have to take a break. Will you all stick with us while we uh, take a break? Absolutely. Wonderful. I'm talking to Danny and Jonathan Blair. They are the creators of the of a movie called Found on South Street. This is incredible. They're local. They're, they're doing this work from Riverside. And we're going to continue that conversation when we get back. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. And we will be right back. No sooner done than said on AM 1050 KCAA. Hey, this is Steve Sanchez, and do you know in 2007, I went off to the doctor for a basic checkup, and he informed me, Steve, you got plaque built up around your heart, and you're going to need stents. I informed him, with no offense, doc, I need a second opinion. I go off to a naturopathic doctor, and he introduces me to something called Zango. It's a juice made of the whole mangosteen fruit. You know, the mangosteen fruit has been used for centuries for healing. So, hey, what do I have to lose? I tried it. Three months later, I go back to my cardiologist, no plaque, no stents, and I'm proud to say, seven and a half years later, I'm still 
stint free. I want to turn you on to Zango because it's the only true 100% mangosteen fruit juice. It's patented. In fact, the Mayo Clinic is paying attention because they're doing an extensive study because they cannot ignore all the testimonials around the world. I want to give you a free sample of the Zango juice today. Simply call 888 888- 309-5656. That's 888-309-5656 for your free mango steam juice sample today from the company called Zango. Are you looking for the right place to purchase your landscaping items? Well, come see us at Hydroscape. Hydroscape offers a large selection of irrigation products including Irritrol and Toro, such as their efficient precision nozzles. For 40 years, Hydroscape has been family owned and operated, serving Southern California. With 17 locations, our knowledgeable and experienced staff is equipped to help you with all your irrigation, landscape, and outdoor living projects. Whether you're installing irrigation systems, wanting to maintain a healthy landscape, or simply create a beautiful lit space for outdoor entertaining, Hydroscape is the place to go. Visit our website at hydroscape.com for more information and find helpful articles on our blog. Or call our customer service center at one 800 395 Four four seven seven. What have I learned so far? Well, I've learned there's no one right path for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited, very limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that has a flexible schedule so I can keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found a new career with training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What I've learned so far? I've learned that I could change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Speaking of everything, this is AM 1050 KCAA. Oh, don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny. Said, Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. We continue our conversation with Daniel and Jonathan Blair about their film found on South Street. And Todd, I know you're itching to ask a question. Yeah. So, um, you know, guys, the, the, the plot, as you described it, sounded really interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Um, but one of the things you talked about was exploration of self-identity. And I understand that you, you use sort of a framework for that aspect of your film. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes, Jonathan's going to turn that over to me for a moment. <laughs> this is Danny. Uh, Good morning. The work actually started um, as an educational resource tool. That's what I do. I'm, uh, you've already mentioned what I do at Cal Baptist University, director of the Center for Deaf Studies. And one of the uh, things we like to do is create educational resources that will be useful in the deaf community because, again, once again, the... Uh, there are not that many resources like that. And Cal Baptist is, uh, you may or may not know, it's uh, an explicitly Christian university, so we've tried to create some Christian-based uh, materials. And I've done a little bit of that in the past. And frankly, I was about to do another one, had a, uh, a, a generous grant uh, from Hope for the Heart Foundation in Dallas, Texas, and I happened to run the idea by my son, Jonathan, and said, hey, how do you like these other videos we've done? He said, yeah, they're okay. I'm like, what do you mean they're okay? I think they're great. <laughs> and, and can you do better? And he said, well, yeah, let's write a story about it. So it started off as a, uh, to be maybe a 30-minute short film, actually a series of skits dealing with the counseling issue of identity based on June Hunt's counseling materials. They're called Biblical Counseling Keys. And, uh, well, anyway, I'm, I'm going too long on this. but uh, No, no, you're fine. Keep going. It's very interesting. Okay, that's how it started. So as we got into this, and Jonathan and another talented friend of his who became our cinematographer, director of photography, Taylor Buckley, 
these guys got a hold of it, <clears throat> and uh, before we knew it, we had uh, a feature film. It just kept expanding because we realized the story needed to be told, and as we've already pointed out this morning, there's so many layers to it that we couldn't just leave as, you know, in a cliche way or a shallow way, the layers of the deaf cultural, sociocultural uh, dynamics going on. There was also the spiritual warfare that's going on. And uh, just the whole, the basic human issue of identity, and it, it turned into a really captivating story and very pleased with it. We've had, it's been very well received so far, and uh, we're we're getting it out there. Thanks to you guys. Well, this it's 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 our pleasure. I mean, uh, we it, this is really a terrific film. And and uh, the question, one of the questions that I have is that you know, if you're not in the deaf culture at all, um, you have no idea how rich that culture is. Talk about the deaf culture a little bit. Okay, um, exactly. Uh, you know, we have a term, the deaf world, and the deaf community, and that's because. Uh, deaf people who, and, and typically we're talking about deaf people who sign and usually who have been deaf from an early age. We're not necessarily talking about old people like me who just lose their hearing. You know, that's not what we mean when we say the deaf community. <laughs> and I haven't lost my hearing yet. <laughs> um, okay. My wife so, thinks I have. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a real vibrant community. They have their own language. It's really rooted and centered around the language, but there's also deaf art. There is deaf film, which we are now tapping into. Uh, deaf literature. Uh, there's a whole history and heritage. There's deaf education. And uh, one of the goals of our film is simply to raise awareness of this other uh, world, sometimes uh, considered a different world of the deaf community and promote awareness between deaf people and hearing people, but also between deaf people who are culturally deaf, who accept this identity, and uh, people who simply have lost their hearing. They are perhaps profoundly deaf, but they may not identify with the deaf world. And there's been some controversy between those two groups also over uh, cochlear implantation and uh, trying to eradicate deafness, trying to heal it. And of course, that, the, the film tackles that head on. We do not take a right or wrong position, but we want to promote respect among all these people groups. I think we did a pretty good job. Well, that's fantastic. So how do people, are you having any screenings coming up? How do people engage? How do they watch the film? Are you on social media, etc.? Absolutely. Um, in addition to being uh, first-time filmmakers, um, everybody on the project... Um, Everybody involved, it was their first time. Nobody had ever experienced anything like this before. In addition to being first-time filmmakers, we're also first-time uh, promoters and marketers of a film. Um, we're all learning the process. We all have um, our day jobs. Um, but we are on social media, uh, specifically Facebook um, and Instagram. Um, our Facebook page is our main hub of um, information, announcements. Um, uh, so... If they want, if anyone wants to keep track of the film, uh, we announce all of our screenings and everything on our Facebook page. Um, so a huge way you can support the film is by liking us on our on our Facebook page, Found on South Street, on Facebook. Uh, we also have a website, Found on South Street, dot com. But um, yeah, we, right now we have three upcoming showings. Um, our next one is September twenty third at California School for the Deaf Riverside um, during Deaf Awareness Week. As a matter of fact, so uh, that's a huge. Uh, kind of deaf festival where a bunch of well-known, uh, high-profile deaf people, we all, uh, you know, the whole community, the deaf people of the Inland Empire kind of um, flock to uh, that area at, at that time. Um, so our next screening is September 23rd at CSDR. Um, after that, we have a screening at the Bournes Technology Center on October 3rd in Riverside. In Riverside. Yeah, that's at UC Riverside, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, 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 it is. Yeah, and our third is at uh, uh, New, New Hope Community Church in El Monte. Oh, okay, that's terrific. Now, if we uh, have any pastors who are listening and they want to do a screening at their church, do they just reach out through Facebook? Absolutely. That would be perfect. Just contact us, and we are uh, full steam scheduling right now. We're getting interest uh, around the country, but we're starting off trying to focus here in Southern California. We'd love to hear from you. 
when we do screenings, we uh, so far we've been able to send uh, Jonathan, our writer and director, and our lead actors, several lead actors, uh, to come out for a Q and A afterwards. And those have been very productive. Oh, I bet. Absolutely, yeah. And right now, just like you said, we're in the process of <laughs> anyone. Everyone and anyone that wants to see the film, we that is our goal right now is to bring the film to you. Um, right now we're looking at a variety everywhere from university campuses to uh, churches to prisons to um, homeless shelters, you know, everyone, um, because those are all people that the film, the story of the film can touch. So, so basically everybody. Yeah, <laughs> basically <laughs> everybody. Uh, well, it has been such a treat having you on the show with us today. And please, you know, come back again and tell us how things are going. And definitely, if you have another film that you're going to be working on, we want to hear about that, too. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. We sure will. Thank you so yeah, much. Congratulations, guys. Sounds like it's a great film. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we've been talking with Jonathan and Danny Blair. They are the creators of Found on South Street. You've got to see this movie. Check them out on Facebook. Um, and, and they're at also at your, you all have uh, foundonsouthstreet.com, correct? Correct, yeah. All right. And so then they can find links to social media there and, and find out all about the film and the actors and everything else. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you. So there's one last thing that we need to talk about before the show is over. The, the L.A. County Fair is coming up. Are you going to go, Todd? You know, um, I am uh, kind of crowd averse, so I haven't gone a lot recently, but I'm actually talking about it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. You know, my dad was a big fair fan growing up in oh, rural yeah, Kansas. That's and so true. And, uh, you know, I guess I got the bug a little bit. So I've actually been thinking about going over there. You know, Pomona's not that far away. Um, and, uh, you know, there's just something about being out at the fair. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking about it. You can find around. great deals on stuff. Like if you want to buy a spa <laughs> or something yeah. like that, you can find great deals at the fair. Best blender we ever bought. My dad bought at a fair. D are you serious? He, he bought a Vitamix blender. The guy demonstrated, I mean, he threw in like parts of the yard and all kinds of things <laughs> and blended up this thing that tasted like berries and it was delicious. <laughs> A little yeah. fescue tasted like berries. That's right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was just the, some of the stuff, the, the strangest things. You know, of course, these days we're a little more used to that. You know, you go yes. in and you can, you know, have some wheatgrass squeezed for you and stuff. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was. Um, and that blender, at the time, it had a reversing function. And you'd flip the reverse button and the blender would jump on the counter. Oh. Like, like, you know, five inches to the left every time you'd flip the reverse function. It so was hilarious. We are totally great. out of time. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you for joining us uh, today. Thank you, Todd, for joining me today. We are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. This is KCAA Loma Linda, the station that leaves no listener behind. CNBC News is next, a courtesy of buysellmakeoffer.com, where you can post a video about items you have for sale. Sign up now. It's free. I'm Chris Mauer, CNBC Business Radio. September is off to a rough start on Wall Street. Asian stocks plunging overnight on some weak economic data out of China. European shares are also getting slammed. August was the worst month for the Dow since May of 2010, dropping nearly 7 percent. The S&P was off more than 6 percent, and the Nasdaq dropped nearly 7 percent. Walmart is asking some of its stores to cut back the hours on some of its workers. The giant retailer says the directive is only being given to stores that are assigning more hours than they were expected to, and only a small number of its 4,500 U.S. locations. And it will be twins for Yahoo's CEO, Marissa Meyer, announcing on her blog that she and her husband are expecting twin girls in December. Chris Mauer, CNBC Business Radio. Hey, Bob, how's business? Is the new website helping? Not good. I, I can't figure out how to get the website finished. How did you do it? Easy. I called web.com. They built my website for free. Then they promoted it on all the search engines. Like Google, Yahoo, and Bing? Exactly. And web.com has helped grow my business so much, I had to bring on new staff. Hey, if web.com did it for you, they're perfect for me. Call now, 1-800-535-8815. That's 1-800-535-8815. Again, 1-800-535-8815. Have you had trouble with online dating? This is eHarmony founder, Dr. Neil Clark Warren. We've created a new solution, EH+. 
EH Plus combines the personal attention of a matchmaker with eHarmony's extensive pool of great singles. EH Plus gives you hand-selected matches and freedom from being online. Get started today. Call 855-930-LOVE. That's 855-930-LOVE. Consider this your invitation to sell. At buysellmakeoffer.com, you can sell as much as you want for the next 60 days without paying any fees whatsoever. Sound incredible? It is, and it's true. Buysellmakeoffer.com is the new exciting way to sell your stuff online. Make extra money right now. Sell your old car, furniture, video games, household items, clothes, even your home. Sell anything that's legal. Load up your stuff to sell right now at buysellmakeoffer.com. This is your official invitation to get on board to sell your stuff right now free for the next 60 days and once you see how easy it is you'll want to sign up for more because there are no item fees that's right take this opportunity to move items from the other guys and sell it for free you might even win a samsung tablet amazon gift cards and other cool prizes buy sell make offer.com is the future of online selling you can use skype to talk to your buyer or seller plus you can use video to showcase your items buy sell make offer.com <laughs> It's time for traffic. This is KCAA AM 1050. We got red lights every, everywhere, everywhere. In Ontario, it's stop and go traffic on the 60 westbound between the 15 and the 57 freeway. The 10 west is slow and go from Cherry Avenue to Ramona. 210 west is slow in patches between the 15 and Foothill. In Chino Hills, we have stop and go traffic on the 71 southbound between Pine Avenue and the 91. In Corona, there's an accident that's been cleared on the 91 westbound at 6th and Maple. On the 91 west past Maple, a wreck has been cleared from the right lanes. The drive remains slow from before Magnolia. 15 North is stacking up from Lake Street. Also in Corona, and there's another accident. The shoulder blocked on the 91 westbound approaching the 71. In the Cone Pass, there's an accident. The left lane is blocked. The 15 South before Kenwood Avenue, there's a crash blocking the bypass lane. Traffic is slow from Cleghorn Road. In Moreno Valley, stop and go traffic on the I-215 northbound between Alessandro Boulevard and University Avenue. The 60 West is busy between Heacock and the 215. Finally, in Mira Loma, there's slow traffic on the 15 northbound between Limonite and Ford Street. The south is slow in pockets between the 210 and the 60. This is KCAA AM 1050. I'm Aaron Brinker and Shrive Safe, everybody. This report has been brought to you by Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Head to the Coffee Bean near you this Thursday. That's today, June 25th, from 6 p.m. for $2 small ice blended drinks available at participating locations. See store for details. With your Tuesday news update, I'm Jim Miller, KCAA, 1050 AM, CNBC News, the station that leaves no listener behind. Investigators trying to track down hundreds of thousands of dollars of electronic merchandise stolen from a Rancho Cucamonga deputies called the Model Price at 11701 6th Street at about 11 Friday night after employees discovered someone had stolen a box truck from the property. After looking at the company's surveillance video, police learned the burglars crawled around inside to bypass the alarm system. Over the next few hours, they loaded high-end merchandise from the warehouse and of the stolen model price box truck then drove off. Well, going into Labor Day, Californians paying 50 cents less for a gallon of gas than they did a year ago. Average price for a gallon of unleaded was 334, down from 384 at the end of August last year. That's according to AAA's daily fuel gauge report. The average was higher at 347 in Metro Riverside in San Bernardino. That's exactly a dollar more than the U.S. average price of 247. Gas prices are falling at their fastest rate since December. They continue to drop. Drivers will pay the lowest Labor Day fuel prices since 2004. Riverside is a new community and economic development director. Rafael Guzman, who worked 15 years for the cities of Bellflower and Whittier, will oversee several departments in his Riverside job. He starts September 28th, and he'll supervise the Office of Economic Development, Planning, Building and Safety, Code Enforcement, Real Property Services, Housing Authority, as well as Historic Preservation, Neighborhoods, and Urban Design. That's what's happening on this Tuesday. I'm Jim Miller, KCAA, 1050 AM, CNBC News, the station that leaves no listener behind. He has been a professional money manager for the last 18 years. He is a regular contributor to the Fox Business Channel and Bloomberg Radio. In addition to this, he is a regular contributor to TheStreet.com and MarketWatch.com. Now he's live here on the Wall Street Business Network. Here is Bill Gunderson. And welcome to the Tuesday morning. Welcome to September. Welcome to opening day of 